State fans, good morning. It's okay. Wash the shirts. Wash them. Just wash them in cold, right? Wash everything in cold. Probably brand new. Got a little bit of sweat on it. Probably got some uh, some uh, adult beverage on it as well. There's some Cheeto stains or whatever it may be stained with. Canes last night won 3 nothing at the barn. Last regular season home game. They have four more on a very, very business-like road trip that they will need to take care of things. Last night, it was about the returning Andre Svechnikov. Jordan Stahl does what he does, wins the opening faceoff. And Carolina trying to get this puck into the Blue Jacket zone. Good work there by Sean Corrali. Carolina, unfazed, won't move it in. Svechnikov shoots, he scores! Welcome back! That's the way to feel better! 17 seconds into this one, Andre Svechnikov. Man, Big Mike barely got to blow out the rest of the Let's Go Canes horn. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just, all of a sudden, hey, look, there's a goal. There's a goal. And then the second goal of the game, I was listening on the way home, and before Wade could even get to the your hurricanes are on the path, and then it's just goal. Another <laughs> another goal scored. It was. It was a very slick opening uh, first period for the Canes. The Blue Jackets don't have a lot of talent. You can say that they do, but they don't. Uh, it's a pesky team. There's no doubt about it. But for a game to just kind of get right before you get on the road, that was it. Three nothing for the Blue Jackets. Sebastian Ajo, as uh, Graham just mentioned. 35th goal of the season. Yeah. 35th goal. Like he is this is this is his year, right? This is this is the career year, big contract. Everyone's like, "Oh, he's starting out slow and expectations of a big deal and whatnot." Top 20 for goals, top 25 for assists, points, top, I mean, just everything about Sebastian Ajo's game this season has been tippity top. There's no doubt about it. He's played with a He's played with a couple of partners. Clearly, Seth Jarvis has helped him out a ton having that. And now that they've put Jake Gensel on that line, they just create. They create and create and create. And Sebastian Ajo has been the beneficiary of that. Uh, and he got some chippiness last night too. Took an elbow to the face. It was a kind of a. It was not a kind of a non-call. It was a non-call. Uh, fans wrote him hard for that one. But it was a good. Get well game for Svech, obviously, and certainly for Freddie Anderson. Freddie didn't have to do anything spectacular. He saw everything coming at him. He just he had enough chances to look at. He had the soft ones, right? It just uh, for goalies, you get a couple, you get in that rhythm, and then you just start seeing everything. And he has been playing very, very good hockey between the pipes. It's very clear at that point. And everyone gets to go home happy. You get the win that you're expected to win. Malcolm Subban, who hasn't played in the league in a couple of years, I remember Malcolm Subban when he was the backup goalie in Vegas. Nice. To Mark Andre Fleury, and then got dealt to Chicago and now finds himself in Columbus. I mean, it really wasn't a threat. I'm glad the Canes got a couple of easy ones past him and, and were able to make things happen. But now they they have to move on. They have to get they have to get things rolling. It's very clear that for Rod Brindamore and this team. They need to get, they they need to get hot, right? And it's not just about wins and losses. It's about players getting, getting mojo going. Freddie Anderson clearly has it. Rod talked about the reaction he got out of Svech last night. I mean, I thought he was good. I mean, he's he's played well. I just we were just you know, you wanted to be that what he did tonight have a difference in the game in a positive manner. He certainly did. Because just as this team gets going, Graham, somebody gets sick. Yeah, or somebody has upper body, lower body, or whatever it is, and with the four that are remaining, it's truly time to figure out who's sitting, who is who is sitting in the box above us. Like the Canes signed three uh, three draft picks over the past seventy two hours. Bradley Nadeau, the latest, he was sitting in the box above press row last night. Got a nice round An of hour applause. after he got signed. Yeah, <laughs> everyone clapped for him and took the weird selfies at the weird angle because he's sitting right above us. But everybody who sits in the section right beneath. Uh, the the press rows there gets to you know hold up their phones and take photos of them or whatever it was, uh, you know. But it was good. He, you showed him a good time. But also that box also has other guys in it that are healthy scratches. Yep. Tony D'Angelo, Jesperi Coke and Yami. Yeah. And so where do they fit when it comes to the playoff positioning? The Coke and Yami one is probably the most uh, most interesting because of the lines that he has played on, because of the consistency in terms of just. 
being on the ice for the Carolina Hurricanes. Well, he did go through that stretch. Uh, I can't remember what part of the season, but he did go through a stretch where I mean, he had no points for like what twenty games, or was go- it was either it was, he was goalless for about a stretch of twenty games. It's not that you're seeing an effectiveness. Is that you made you made a couple of deals? You went out and got yourself Jake Ensel. You went and brought in Evgeny Kuznetsov. You went and brought in game changers. And how I need to change games is by having those guys in the lineup. And guys have to sit. But they're going to have to find some. There's some chemistry. There was some line. There was, there's interesting pairings at the lines uh, that, that Rod is certainly going through. And they've got four more games to work on it. And I say work on it in the nicest sense possible because I'm not sure how much tinkering you're going to do knowing that you're taking on Boston and you'd like to get that one back that you let them take back on April 4th, less than a week ago. You're back up there tomorrow night. And then you finish with St. Louis and Chicago over the weekend, and then one more time with Columbus. Nobody wants to limp into the postseason. Nobody wants that. I don't want that. Team doesn't want that or needs that. So they're sitting on 49 wins right now. 49, 22, and 7. Not a big fan of the if the playoffs ended today. But it, I mean, the playoffs began today. But if the playoffs began today, they would open up with the New York Islanders. Yep. The New York Islanders who find themselves willing themselves into the postseason and could be trading spots with Pittsburgh because Sidney Crosby, damn it, is going to make sure that he gets into the postseason. Sidney Crosby After last like, year, yeah. he is going to drag them in there. Sidney Crosby's playing right now like, if none of you guys want to step up and make it to the playoffs, I'll just go by myself, and you guys can just be my, <laughs> yeah. you guys can be my entourage. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, we are all living in your world right now. The, it's, it's, the, it's the Islanders, it's the Penguins, it's the Washington Capitals. Right now, Carolina could face anybody yeah. at this point. I mean, it's it's just completely wide open. But it is setting up right now for a second-round matchup if they get passed in that second round. If they make it to the second round, let's call it what it is, it'd be with the Rangers. And you've got something magical stirring there. But you got to get there first. And you still have four games to go. And you got to get these things squeezed in and get yourselves right. And stay healthy at the same time. I had called uh, for for um, uh, more to Scott Moore to play. Uh, clearly wasn't going to skate, but I'm thinking at some point he's going to get in there. He might get in there against Columbus because you're going to go into those games going, okay, who do I not need playing a truckload of minutes tonight yeah. where we don't have to worry too much about playoff positioning? Right now they still have to deal with the playoff positioning. They still need to keep pace with points. There's still an outside shot at taking the President's Trophy. It will take a collapse by the Rangers to make that happen. And the Canes have to get past the Bruins, which is the biggest lift coming up over these next four games. And what a magical lift that would be if they could get one tomorrow night up in Boston. I'm Graham Hill with three things you need to know right now from 99.9 The Fan. The men's NCAA National Championship game is tonight as the Purdue Boilermakers take on the UConn Huskies at 920. You're going to hear coverage all day right here on 99.9 The Fan, and pregame coverage begins as early as 730. A new episode of the Canes Corner Podcast hosted by Adam Gold is out now on The Fan's YouTube channel and wherever you find your favorite podcast as Adam recaps the Carolina Hurricanes 3-0 shutout victory over the Columbus Blue Jackets. Welcome home, Adam. One last episode of Pat Therapy this season will be released today on the Fans YouTube channel and wherever you find your favorite podcast. As it's the Final Four Recap Edition, Tim Donnelly and I share our final thoughts on NC State's incredible NCAA tournament run. You can find these stories and more on WRLSportsFan.com. Paul Ihander here at Graham Hill. We're just indulging ourselves a little bit on this Monday. Trying to uplift you a little bit for those of you kind of a little bit down, but don't. Don't be down because you got football to look forward to. Spring game was at Carter Finley Stadium uh, Saturday afternoon. Watched a bunch of it. I was not there in person. I know you were there, Graham. I saw it a lot. So what, what they were able to show on TV, I don't know why ECC Network cut away, but it was 51-7 to when they cut away at 4 o'clock. On Saturday, and what I saw, taking the few notes, uh, Justin Jolly, whoo, love you, 
Yeah. Um, True tight end position. Yeah, that dude looks the part, acts the part, is the part. Grayson McCall, very accurate, very efficient, did what he needed to do, rolled out, made solid passes. I- I'm not crazy. They did some trick play thing. Uh, you were there. I'm not crazy about trick plays in a spring game. I'm not trying to fool my defense that badly. Yeah. Uh, I- but that's not me. That's Robert and I. You do you, Robert. Uh, I know I'm being a little bit upbeat about it, but I think for Pack fans, as you lean into what happened on Saturday at Carter Finley, uh, Jordan Waters, oh my goodness. And everybody that they hit the portal for or were able to fetch out of the portal. And Hollywood Smothers, don't forget about Hollywood him. Smothers. Uh, all seem to have their roles. Like, they have defined roles. They know what they were getting into when they came to state. And, again, this is a spring game, but if you just can look beyond the fact that it was glorified scrimmage with pads, there is some certain, there are there are some excitable things that will be happening in 2024 if everyone stays healthy. For NC State specifically. Yes. For, are, and this is, this... This is a team that looks very confident offensively with with a good they're in a good quarterback situation. They've added the right skill guys they needed to. Uh d- again, defense, it's uh, spring games aren't about defense. I mean, they're about offense. Yeah. See what you can put together. The defense will get to show itself here in about 4 months. Let's see if we actually get an aerial attack or an aerial offense this year out of Robert and I. I know I know state fans were kind of promised it last year. And, of course, you had the struggles at the beginning of the year with Brandon Armstrong, obviously, MJ Morris, and you kind of just had the the musical chairs of quarterback situation. But it felt like that you never really got those big-time plays through the air. You mostly got it on the ground with uh, a KC Concepcion on jet sweep. Yeah, jet sweep, go deep. That's KC Concepcion this year. Jet sweep, go deep. You're going to run past everybody, and you're going to run by everybody. Do that. Let Jordan and Hollywood – I'm going to take a while to get used to saying Hollywood smothers, but I'm okay with it. Uh, Waters and Smothers in a backfield, in a backfield tandem, you will have no issues whatsoever being able to run the football. And don't forget about Caden Newcaster, a big part of NC State's offense. Truth. <laughs> I don't want to see. I don't want to see. I'm being, I'm last being, year, I'm being last year, yes, it was. Yes, you I'm, needed him. I'm being facetious. You Wolfpack needed fans. him last year for sure. Uh, anyway, so spring game. It's spring balls over. You've got four months to sit on that one and enjoy it. So that was the quickest catch up we can give you. McCall looked the part. He looked good. Noah Rogers definitely is Mr. Slant action. Uh, he's going to make all the tough catches for you. And, again, the the players that came out of the portal that they were able to sign and secure on this team certainly have roles. There are no there are no loose ends when it comes to that. And just, you know, to, to talk to our NC – or not NC – we've been talking to our NC State fans pretty much all week. We have. North Carolina, we don't – we haven't forgot about you. Their spring game, April 20th at – Keenan Memorial Stadium. It's, I believe yeah. it's a 2 o'clock kickoff. And then the blue and white spring game at Wallace Wade Stadium for Duke. 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 As I do my best trip Durham PA Duke. announcer impression. Yeah. Saturday, April 20th as well at 6 o'clock. Really? That might be the first day of the NHL playoffs on the 20th. Not even a joke. That could be a crazy Saturday. A crazy Saturday. There you have it. All right, we're talking WrestleMania. It's also the Hill family reunion. (laughs) (laughs) So I will not be at said events. Really? They're all going to come flocking to you, man. Just saying. You have so much to talk about. They're going to hit you up. Do you go places, and I I deal with this a little bit as as people start recognizing the fact that I do work in sports media or understand people that I've known for a long time. Whenever we come across each other, whether it's reunions or we see each other in a street or restaurant or whatever, they always hit you up about sports. Like, sure. And they always want your hot sports take or whatever it is, when in fact all you really wanted to do was just kind of visit with them. Yeah. And like say hi and say, hey, how are the kids? Or, you know, uh, hey, it's a, your, your, your yard looks great. I, I get that a lot. You gonna you expecting that at the Hill Family Reunion here? I'm in, expecting. Hey, Mama Hill. I'm expecting at the Hill Family Reunion to get the old, uh, you've grown so much, look how handsome you are, which is ah. always a lie. That's why I work in radio. And um, so just what did you think about NC State's uh, there you go. tournament run? There you go. That's I'm like, coming. I'm like, can we not talk about the Carolina Hurricanes run that they're about to go on the, yeah. on the, in the playoffs? D- different bit, right? Different bit. With expectations and success comes re- repetition. It won't be about smile because it happened. It'll be about smile because you enjoyed that it happened. By the way, shout out to everybody that came to me at the uh, – because I had a different role yesterday at the Hurricanes game. I was doing promotions, so I was handing out 
pucks, koozies, oh, wow. bottle cool. openers. You know, you can never have too many of those bottle for, openers? for the no, playoff games. Not. And shout out to everybody that actually came by and, you know, was was nice. I promise that. I don't, I don't try to come across as a jerk on air. I hope I don't. So if you ever see me out <laughs> in public, you know, let's let's chat. There you go. Uh, we started the show by talking about finishing the story last night, WrestleMania. Some of you are professional wrestling fans. I do enjoy professional wrestling. Cody Rhodes, sorry I'm spoiling. Cody Rhodes won the undisputed WWE Championship, defeating Roman Reigns in a throwback uh, nostalgia-filled match because it had uh, kind WCW of— WCW days, yeah. Yeah, it had no rules, right? No rules. It had so run-ins, interferences. Everybody from the WWE's past and present seemed to have a role in this event, which was fantastic. Again, the son of Dusty Rhodes, the legendary professional wrestler who passed away uh, several years ago. Uh, Cody Rhodes has come back to take the title. Uh, good to see Bailey get her championship back, although I think Io Sky is an amazing wrestler. Io Shirai, uh, Io Sky, however you know her in the professional wrestling ranks. Again, I'm getting a little bit geeky here, but WrestleMania was really fun. Like It was a very, very fun event. You uh, even had uh, Jason Kelsey make a cameo appearance. Oh, my God. Oh, that's right. The Kelseys and uh, George late, Kittle was in the Johnson front row. Johnson was there. Yep. George Kittle was there. Yeah, yeah, there were NFL players. Pat McAfee obviously was there because he is now uh, collecting a paycheck from WWE as well. And we cannot forget the Dwayne The Rock Johnson wrestling Friday night and him and John Cena having a show, or stare off last night in the ring. The Rock and Cena. Yeah. Undertaker. It was a good time. I mean, it's 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 waxing a little bit poetic. I'm sorry I'm not letting y'all in on this one, but uh, WrestleMania was uh, it was fun. 